Good evening with the Lime Sports World. I'm Damien Best. CONCACAF President Jeffrey Webb, who's also a FIFA Vice President, has been on an official visit to Barbados, getting an update on recent projects. Marsha Boyce reports. Jeffrey Webb is optimistic about the ongoing developments in football in Barbados, particularly the Buildy Goal project. It looks um, a very impressive project that, that the Federation has outlined there with the football field, their headquarters, dormitories. I am hoping, of course, to, to be back in, in perhaps in October later on in the year with, with President Blatter to open the facility. Um, in regards to, to the stadium, obviously it needs a lot of work. Um, I've seen the, the surface, the field, and I've met, of course, with the Minister of Sports this morning, who has undertaken a, a, a firm commitment to, to enhance and improve the, the facility, um, starting, of course, with the football field. And while Webb is sad to see the state of the National Stadium, he's heartened by the work being done at the University of the West Indies facility. He says infrastructure is key to the game's development, but emphasis must also be placed on the grassroots level. CONCACAF is fully committed. We've created a development department for the first time in our, our history. Uh, we've, we've set various standards with coaching D license, uh, C license and B and, and A. Um, we've now launched, of course, our own grassroots program, which complements that of, of uh, FIFA. And really, we're trying to say to the federations that, look, let's, let's not focus on the top down. Let's focus on the bottom up. That isn't the only advice the FIFA vice president has for the National Association. In light of recent media reports, he's calling on all stakeholders to work with President Randy Harris for the good of the game. I think at this time, is, is perhaps it's, it's time for all stakeholders to come together. Come together and, and, and um, if, if it hasn't been done yet, of course, but, but perhaps everybody to agree on, on a common vision and a common goal as to what is in the best interest of Barbados. It's, it's hard work, it's, it's vision, it's strategic planning. Um, is, is motivating, of course, the public and private sector to, to invest in that vision and that dream. Webb is expected to be back later this year. Marsha Boyce, CBC Sports. Well, thanks, Marsha. Pine Hill St. Leonard's Secondary School are the champions of this year's under-16 Coca-Cola Football League competition. Playing at the Harrison College ground, the Richmond boys defeated Frederick Smith Secondary in a penalty shootout after the score was locked at 2-all after regulation and extra time. Meanwhile, a lone goal gave Alexandra School the victory over Christchurch Foundation in a third place matchup. This is the third place playoff. Alexandra in blue and white up against Christchurch Foundation School. Free kick from the left. And look at that for a close shave off the upright. Good effort. The response from Alexandra, the cross coming in, and the goalkeeper confident picks it out of the air. 0 0 then at half time. In the second, 50th minute to be exact, Alexandra will get the breakthrough they were looking for. Some individual brilliance, then a poor clearance, and Russell Taylor with the shot, and it's in. That's how it ended. Alexandra won. Christchurch Foundation nil. Alexandra finishing third in the tournament. On to the grand finale, Pine Hill St. Leonard's in red, taking on Frederick Smith secondary. 16th minute, St. Leonard's free kick, and Christopher Shepard on the doorstep to knock it in. That's 1-0 to the boys in red. Then in the 25th, Krishan Brown made matters worse for Frederick Smith secondary. A little 1-2 and the finish is delightful from Brown. Cylinders 2, Frederick Smith 0. In the second half, Frederick Smith with renewed vigor searching for a way back into the game and they would find it. Romain Farley making it 2-1. We've got a game on our hands. And just when it looked as if St. Leonard's had done enough to hold on, Frederick Smith said, oh no, 70th minute, foul committed down the right. And that's a free kick. Oh, what can they do here? Cause some pandemonium, Farley with the golden header, and it's celebration time. We're tied at two all. Well, it stayed that way until the end of regulation and extra time. So this one's headed to penalties. Right on Pilgrim, getting Frederick Smith on the board. Kobe Bell to make it 1-1, just beating the keeper. Frederick Smith, 2-1, nope, denied by the woodwork. Rashad Critchlow, good as goal. Kemal Haynes keeping his team in the contest, keeper going the wrong way. And just when St. Leonard's feeling confident, this happened, that's well wide. Kevian Innes and Christopher Shepard would make it 3-0. Akeem Welch. 
for Frederick Smith. 4-3 now. The Jad Ford, good two. But St. Leonard's goalkeeper came up with the prize block. That's heartbreak. So can St. Leonard's now finish the job? No doubt about it. St. Leonard's winning the under-16 title. You're feeling Frederick Smith, secondary 5-4 on penalties. We're back. Well, it's looking as if it's going to be a repeat of last year's Basketball Premier League final. Last night at the Wildy Gym in game one of both semi-final series in the co-operators general BABA playoffs. Defending champs Barbados Lumber Company LSC and Smalter Pinelands had easy victories over their respective opponents, Station Hill Cavaliers and Cougars. CBC's Mark Seal reports. Andre Badu was the man for LSC on the glass. He had 11 rebounds, including five offensive. That one resulted in his only two points. Lakers as a team were also efficient in stealing the ball, 11 of them. This one by Armand Haynes, saved by Keith Burkett, advanced to Ian Alexander, who dunks it home. Coming off the bench for the Cavs was the businessman, Kelvin Patterson. He only plays in the second half of the season, and play he does. He had 10. Seconds to go in the first quarter, the Cavs swarm Alexander, but they left Keith Burkett free and he drains the long three to give LSC the 11 point lead. Burkett actually had it going on from beyond. Jamar King recognized who had the hot hand and left it for Burkett who drained the second of his seven threes he had on the night. LSC actually did well in finding the open man. Another steal, Burkett pushing it up court but opted to kick it back to Mark Bridgman who had 13. Cavs didn't have that fluency, but they did have Jamario Clark head down and boring his way to two of his ten. But LSC were still up by 24 at the half after scoring the Cavs 21 to 8 in the second. When their bats are against the wall, the Cavs usually scrap and pressure, and they did that at the start of the third. The steal and Corey Howard lays in two of his team high 12. Both teams scored 21 in that period, though. That meant LSC were still up by 24. I told you that Burke had seven threes, but I didn't tell you that they accounted for 84% of his game high 25, as LSC went on to win by 20, 79 to 59. We pick up the Cougars Pinelands game in the second quarter with Pinelands up by 15. Jeremy Gill with time running out gets the runner to drop. For the lead to be 22 at the half, Gill had 11. Cougars though would outscore the Pine 28 to 18 in the third. Jeffrey Leacock, who only had two points in the first half, here with three of his 10 points in the third quarter alone. He had a 14 overall. Damian Nichols had himself a double-double, 11 boards and 12 points. Then check this shot from Adrian Sturt. He actually squares up to the basket after he was already airborne. Count him for 13 and Ricardo Gemmett for 14 as they cut the lead down to 12. But no one, and I mean no one, would predict that the Cougars would only score two points in the fourth. Air ball. Pinelands sharing the rock. Charles Vanterpool getting the layup. That's two of his 15. Ramon Simmons had seven threes for back-to-back 30-point -back games. He had 31 on this night. Nothing but net. As the Pine outscored the Cougars 31-2 in the fourth, to win by 41 points, 97 to 56. Mark Seal, CBC Sports. Well, thanks, Mark. Game two in both series is tomorrow, starting at 6 p.m. at the Wildy Gym. Empire Club is celebrating 100 years of existence. To mark the occasion, the club has selected Sir Everton Weeks as its patron for the planned year-long activities. Now, this Sunday, a church service will kickstart uh, celebrations. Other planned events include a queue in the community at the club on May 22nd and a cocktail and awards ceremony on the 24th. President of the club, Adrian King, says the cricket team in particular will be going on a tour to England in August. A great deal of excitement at Empire about our first tour to London, uh, which will primarily be cricket, unfortunately, but that is, that is um, a first start. Um, a few months ago, we met with um, members of and representatives of the MCC and um, the chairman of that committee Mr. Peter Innes, I believe he's here with us has done quite a bit of work along with his committee and um, 
I can tell you that on the 15th of August, um, Empire will play against the select MCC 11 at Lords. Um, they really have been quite generous with us and um, we, we, we're really looking forward to that. That tour takes place between August 12th and 22nd.